Hey, in the middle of last summer, my Kiev 60 started to misbehave and it started to overlap picture frames on top of each others. Now that is a very common problem with Kievs and managing that framing is a constant battle. Now, uh, I then managed to fix my Kiev and I made a video about testing the Kiev and then fixing it and all that. Uh, but it was so slow and boring that I chose not to post that video. But then I hinted about it, hinted about these lost tapes and quite a few of you said that they would like to see it. So I'll show it to you. So the story is that I first fixed it and then I went on a lake and tested it. And then when I saw the test results, I did it again. I opened it only for this video to show you how to fix it. So there are two parts. There is this lake part that actually takes you back to the summer, which at least to me is worth watching. But if you want to skip that part and go directly to see how I fixed the frame spacing of my Kiev, you can go to this location. If you want to see the build up and some summer boating and don't do anything, just keep on watching and we'll get to the fixing part later. Have fun! Great success! <laughs> it seems uh, I managed to fix my Kiev. You know, for the test run I used expired film. I didn't want to waste a fresh new roll of film. So I had expired T-Max, uh, Kodak T-Max 100. This has been expired already in 96, so I shot it as ASA 40. And then to standard development in Extol. Uh, surprisingly nice pictures I get. Let me now show you how to fix the spacing of Kiev 60, which is the most problematic area. For that you need only one tool, a small flathead screwdriver. That's all you need. And then I use two plates. <laughs> These are my tools. And let me see if I can get a little bit of light here. <laughs> 
I'm more about content than production values. So um, the first thing we need to do is that we need to remove this crank. And you can just start to rotate this black thingy. And if it's really tight, you can try to carefully use pliers, but be careful. It, all the metal parts, all the parts in Kiev are extremely fragile. So you open it. And there are three parts. There's this outer ring. Then there is this kind of a metal thingy. Oh, actually there are more parts than three. There are four parts. And there is this uh, circle that has uh, different kind of ASA numbers or yeah and then there is this kind of a metal bracket it goes upwards when you put it back remember that the little uh, wings need to point upwards and this is how I use these plates I just you know put these things on the plate then there are three screws that you need to open I say it already now that when we put these back, let's not tighten them up too tight because this is really fragile stuff. These screws are all similar, so it doesn't matter which way you put them back or which, which goes into which hole. Then you can lift the crank, but un, you know the first is upper part. Then there is a little spacer underneath. And then we need to, you know, the crank is still attached. So then there is this little wheel that opens like a screw. So we push it counterclockwise and it starts to open. And then you can open it with your hands, this, this little screw. There are three spacers underneath this screw. I don't know if it's significant in which order they are. So I keep them at the same order and I lift this as a whole. I let the screw to be loose there and the, spa and the spacers and I won't sort of separate them. I put it carefully on the plate and keep it there. Then one more thing to take out is it's also some kind of a spacer but it has a square hole in it. And that's why it sort of grabs into the whatever that is. Then uh, now we have the film advancement crank off. Then we take the hood off. And now we need the other plate. I take the next screws and put them on the other plate. There are one, two, three, four, five, six little screws. Uh, that hold on this upper part. We need to remove this upper part. These are very easy to take off. And they all seem to be similar once again, so it doesn't matter which way you put them back. One, two, three. It's kind of difficult to work and then at the same time try, try to show you. By the way, so that you appreciate what I'm doing, I'm opening this up only for this video because it's working alrighty, so I sh you know, wouldn't need to open it up if I didn't do it for you. Yeah, clever me would have uh, filmed this when I actually fixed this, but now I know how to do this, so it's easier for me to show it. And then the final screw. That is here. And the easy part is that you don't need to take this one off. But I suggest that you turn it to the bulb mode. Because then when we put it back, it's easier to put it back when you know where it was. So we, I put it on the bulb mode. And then I just lift this whole upper sort of frame or chassis. Like this. And then there's one thing that is loose. The only thing that is loose is on top of this um, speed dial. There's this little part and I suggest that you take that off and put it on the second plate so that it won't drop. 
Now it should be so that you can turn it upside down and nothing gets out. So Kiev's biggest problem is the spacing of the frames on the film. But lucky enough it is really easy to fix. There are only two screws you need to know. This one here is the locking screw and turning it counterclockwise, say 180 degrees, you open the locking and then you can turn this screw that is right next to it. And then rotating this you can move it up and down. As you can see the hole is slightly bigger than the screw so it moves up and down when you open this lock. And the further up you move it the closer your frames go. Then when you find the right spacing for your film and then you lock it with this screw. These two screws. Locking screw and then the adjustment screw. So how do you then know that you have adjusted it properly? Take an empty film roll and open it. Like this is only a packing paper. And then um, put it on a, on a spool like if it was new film. So uh, start rolling from the what says exposed and put it on a on a roll again like this. So now it's like a new roll of film, it says unexposed. And then you load your camera as if your camera was... as if you would take pictures. This is, this is no different. Hold on a second, I'll show you. And then advance it all the way to the mark. There's this red dot and the arrow should be aligned. Now you need to put the crank back and for that you need this this part that looks a little bit like a horseshoe. The opening goes to the to the right from looking from my and then you take this assembly the crank the spacers and the screw and you put it on top of this. Now we don't have the housing here because this is only to test that we have done a good job. I think it's enough to tighten it up with your hands. And then now you advance the film four times. One, two, three, four. And as you can see I got number one right in the middle. Number two still right in the middle. Uh, this is how you can test that it's the spacing is right and what is important is that that first one is at the right position. I needed to do a couple of tries to move this adjustment screw to get this right, but I you know, eventually managed to do it. Then when you have it set, then it's time to put everything back and you just do whatever we did earlier, but now in the reverse order. First we need to take this crank off because we need to put the housing back first. Once again, try to lift this Screw these spacers and the crank as a one unit and it saves you a little bit work later. Also take this horseshoe off. Now remember we put this little thing back here from the speed dial. We took that off and we put it there. It goes only one way so you can be sure now that it's in the right position. And remember that when we took this off, we put it into the bulk mode. So this is now rotating loosely, so make sure that it is in the bulb setting, B setting, before you put it back. Because now this is in the B setting. We just put it there like this. Maybe a little bit tight, shouldn't be...
and then before tightening any screws make sure that this one works and it goes all the way to thousand and then back to bulb so then you attach this in the right way so then after we have this um, housing in place the first thing to put uh, put on here is this little horseshoe and it goes so that this um, higher part goes upwards if, if you look at it it's not totally flat it has a little bit of an edge and this edge goes upwards and the opening goes that way <laughs> to your to your right if you are looking at it from behind first is horseshoe then we take this crank spacer screw assembly that we carefully try to keep together and then there are these little spacers that I try to keep in the middle I mean they are a little bit bigger than this screw so they might start to wander around I don't know if that matters but then there are these little notches in this screw so it, it's not a proper screw but there are these notches in the end I just push clockwise with the edge of my screwdriver to tighten it up don't push it too hard I mean these are these are fragile little things you can then try if it works like this uh, then we put these little screws around this body just to tighten it up back one then the two screws in the back for a software engineer like me there's something so fulfilling in you know fixing these old things this is something that like the whole photography is a new discovery to me I was never really handy doing anything and I, I never fixed a lot of things uh, but uh, you know th these are nice things to fix and, and, and especially these old Soviet cameras these are fairly simple and then if you <laughs> break these things it's not a big deal and then we put the final assembly together for the for the advancing crank there is uh, a little spacer it goes on top of this this screw that we tightened up and then on top of that we put this little part that has three screw holes in it it goes there only one way and then the spacer is underneath it and then we have these three little screws that we tighten it up with gently gently I've got some kind of black wax or tar or I don't know what this is on top of this last screw so I'm gonna put it back it may be just dirt <laughs> I don't know what it is I'll put it back I don't know what I'm doing but you know just try to make it the same it was then there was this crown this crown goes so that the wings are up then we put the number plate numbers up then we put this rotating thing and then finally the one that keeps them all together and we tighten them up this I just tighten up with hands and then the last but not least we put the focusing hood back in place this is how I fixed my KF60 um, so it's now tested it takes 13 pictures on one roll and it leaves small but sufficient spaces and above all it's fixed by me myself and I so there you have it 
how to fix Kiev 60 frame spacing. I didn't come up with this by myself. There's this awesome resource, awesome website about all Kiev related. I put the link to the description page and that's where I learned how to fix it. So there's no way I could have figured out it's exactly those two screws that you need to adjust. But it did the trick for me, so I'm really happy. And now you also saw this video. Hey, thanks for watching. <laughs> Next time something else. See you around. Mm -hmm.